How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Luna, Octavia and Stolas. Part 1. Huge shout out to Mightiest Battle for this story. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. A 9 year old Naruto crawled under a bush to hide from the Anbu attacking him. The Hokage had been dragged into a council meeting, and the Anbu who'd lost family saw their chance. They had burned, cut, and stabbed the boy, but the demon fox used his soul to keep him alive. Naruto lay under the bush crying as he held his face with a deep cut going down his right cheek. The burns on his arms were healing, and the blades in his back were pushed out as the wounds healed. The QB, with his powers sealed into the siblings, the boy's bastard father and whore mother, took out of the village. They even took the godparents with them to train the two brats. Well he was forced to use his own life force to keep the kid alive. Even in his newly weakened state, the QB could hear them as they talked. They took the other two kits the boy was born with. Another male and a female, each holding half his power. They believe one of them would be this child of prophecy who'd save the ninja world. The QB, a duke of hell, answered only to Lucifer and his wife, and killed everything that ever got in his way. Now, he was stuck in a kit that shouldn't have to go through this. But, the QB knew that the more of his life force was forced into the boy's system, the more he'd become fox-like. The whisker marks on his face were just the beginning if he had to keep doing this. The QB could use the last of his real power and fuse them, but that would send the boy back to hell to regain the power they lacked. It would take many years to regain all they'd lost, and the chance existed that he'd vanish after the fusion. It's here. QB heard that a decision to hell with it. He'd lived for over a thousand years, much older than most demons. A hundred of them sealed away in a damn human that just wants to use his damn powers. But this kid wanted nothing to do with this and had no say in anything. The QB infused all his claws and tails with his soul, ready to stab them into the kid's own soul. Sorry, kid. Naruto panicked and then crawled farther into the bushes before pain shot through the boy's body. And screamed, making the Anbu jump back as a massive chakra blast came from Naruto's body. The bushes and a few through were thrown away, and they all saw a seal under his torn up and burnt shirt. A red dome started forming around him. It's finally showing itself. They were about to attack the dome before the San Deami Hokage jumped down with Anbu Dog and Cat at his side. Stop you fools. But they were all too late. Naruto vanished in a blinding light. It forced them to cover their eyes before a massive blast threw them all away. They looked up as a massive light shot up into the dark night sky. They all looked up and froze as they saw the image of the QB glaring down at them. It grinned as it looked down at them, planning to scare them all one last time, as he felt his soul fading into nothingness. Thanks for freeing me from my cage. After I form, I'm destroy that village with a single attack to show some gratitude. The QB faded from existence with the joy of seeing the horrified face of the old man who'd failed his jailer. Ruins of Yuzu. Minato, Kishina, Tsunade, and Jurei were all sitting around a dinner table trying to come up with tomorrow's training. As Minato was about to speak, two puffs of smoke came from the middle of the table. In the middle of the smoke were the two great sage toads. Lord Fukasaku and Lady Shima. Both looked extremely worried as they looked around. Minato spoke up as he looked at them. Ma, pa what is wrong? They looked at Minato with panic in their eyes. Minato boy. The great elder toad has said that the child of prophecy has left the living world. Are Memna and Mito okay? All of them froze as they looked at the toads. We put them down to bed not an hour ago. Then who? Ashina was about to speak before the red messenger toad Suratobi used to get in contact with Jureya. He looked down sadly and spoke before he noticed the two great sages. Jureya, your teacher sent me with a message. Naruto Uzumaki the son of your late student Minato, has been killed by a rouge squad of Anbu, and the QB was set free to reform. It has promised the swift destruction of the village as thanks for its freedom. His body had been completely destroyed. Nothing but a destroyed shirt was left after the fox got free. He pulled the burned cut up bloody shirt from his small jacket. It hurt the messenger toad deeply as he looked at the shirt. Such a young life had been lost because of blind rage and hate. When he looked up, he was shocked to see the sages of his home and the now broken people around him. Ma and Pa looked at him then Pa grew angry as he looked at the shirt. He turned and glared at Minato and Jureya scaring both men. Who is this Naruto boy? You had another tadpole, and we weren't told. Ma started to cry as she took the shirt with shaky hands. She was known for her great love for all the tadpoles of her clan. And to learn one had met with such a violent end at such a young age, broke her heart of the clan, or not a child's death was to be mourned. Minato couldn't respond as he sat there frozen. And Kishina had fallen from her chair from the shocking news of her apparent firstborn death. Tears came to her eyes, and she covered her mouth and shook her head. Minato came out of his shock and spoke. This wasn't what we planned. Naruto was supposed to be seen as a hero like Mena and Midair to be when we return. 
Already angry, Ha jumped up, grabbed the fourth Hokage's collar, and pulled him down as he landed. You left your tadpole to his death, you damn fool. How could you value two others over one? Ha shook Minato as Ma ripped into Kashina and Jiraiya. Tears ran down her face as she screamed. Holding the shirt to her chest as she yelled. You stupid girl and you damn pervert. You let a young tadpole be left defenseless in a place you should have known was dangerous for him. How could you think it would be safe for him there? Jiraiya tried to explain when Ma stopped yelling, but Pa yelled next. No Ma. These fools can possibly have a good reason. Pa threw Minato back, making him fall from his chair. Pa hopped back over to his wife, and he felt his heart breaking as he looked at his crying wife as she held the shirt tight in her hands. Come on, Ma. We're going to Konoha and we'll collect what we can from the Hokage. We'll put his spirit to rest on Mount Mayaboku, so no human can ever bother him again. What? Pa and Ma glared at them, and then Pa spoke. Mena and Mito will also not be allowed to sign our contract, and we'll speak to the slugs and make sure that they will not be allowed to sign theirs as well. Minato stood up and spoke as Tsunade tried to comfort the sobbing Kashina. But you can't do that. You're one of Konoha's strongest summons, and you can't keep our son's memory away from us. Ma glared at Minato, and Pa stomped his foot on the table. We can, and you and my now failure of student are forbidden to summon us or use sage mode, unless it is in the most dire situations. But that said, the two toads left to find a way to put the spirit of a boy they never knew to rest. They left the shell-shocked humans to come to terms with the fact they had lost a son they never got to know due to their own actions, and that the prophecy that had started all this was now gone. Hell third Pav. A massive wave of power erupted from the forest before her and traveled through nine rings of hell. All the ancient demons in hell shivered as a power missing from hell suddenly reappeared. But, the most shocked was Lucifer as he jumped up from his throne, eyes wide as he felt his old friend's energy. Lilith, his queen, smiled as he knew one of her husband's friends must have finally returned. Gosha family estate. Octavia, a nine-year-old owl girl and one of the heirs of the Gosha family, ran through her family's private forest to find a hiding place. Octavia left the house after hearing her parents fighting. As she ran, she was thrown back by the massive wave of power that erupted from the forest in front of her. Octavia, being the child she was, started walking toward the forest center, wanting to know what was happening. When she reached the forest center, she saw a young boy laying in a hole. As she walked closer, she saw he looked like a fox with a torn up pair of black pants with two large pockets on both thighs. But he had nine blood red tails with orange tails tips and black lines going down them. But he seemed to have a more human body. He had human looking legs, but his arms were a mix of human and fox front legs. He had hands, but his fingers ended in what looked like razor sharp claws. The skin of his face, and she blushed. Naruto's whisker marks had grown out to become larger, with scratches marks at the edges. Around his eyes were black marks. The marks traveled up to his new ears on the top of his head. On his back were six spiral circles on his back all connected by black lines. Think Naruto's baryon mode for the face. Octavia touched his face with her hand. Not sure what to do, Octavia sat down and rested his head on her thigh. Octavia didn't know why, but she started to run her hand through Naruto's hair and felt his ears as she stroked his hair. Octavia. She looked behind her as her father burst through the trees. Octavia rested her hand on Naruto's head, but she froze along with her father as a black portal opened above the forest. They looked up as Lucifer himself fell through the portal. He crashed down in front of them and looked down at Naruto. I see, so my old friend passed on his power and some of his soul as well. Kurama, the first duke and true duke of the wrath. Lucifer looked at the young girl. He saw her holding the boy with such a soft hand, a hand Kurama was never shown or felt. Then he looks at the boy more closely. Newer and older scars could be seen once you looked close enough. Lucifer frowned as he looked at the air his friend sent. No, I will not let history repeat again. Lucifer then looked up at Stolas and spoke in a slow calm tone. Stolas, this young demon is the heir to the title Duke and the Dukeship of Wrath. I leave him to your care for now. I'll be sending one of the kind materials from the human world for him to learn from. Stolas got on one knee and bowed his head. Yes my king. Lucifer turned and opened another portal. He looked back at Naruto out of the corner of his eye. That child, he's going to become very powerful. And those marks on his back. If those are what I think they are. He may even become more powerful than the sins and reach closer to me than Kurama ever did. Hanoha, two days before the return of the fourth Hokage and family. Hanoha, one of the five great nations, was in deep depression and anger. They had all been told the truth by a rage-filled third Hokage. The boy that was killed was the son of the fourth Hokage, and the only thing that was holding the soul of the nine tails in check. He told them that the boy they had beaten, starved, abused, neglected, and shamed, was the son of the great hero of the leaf. 
he'd also told them of how the fourth himself and his wife abandoned his son for his other two children. The civilians of the village were crushed at how they treated the true hero of the village. The ninja clans had felt unbelieved shame as they realized what they'd left Naruto to. Many had thought he could be Minato's and Kashina's son, but had no proof. Now all the ninja heads were standing in front of the Hokage's, having followed the order to come to the Hokage's office. Now, they stood before him as he took a puff of his pipe. He pulled the pipe away and breathed out the smoke as he looked at them all. So you all know, the fourth, his wife, children, and my last two students are coming back to the village. From what I understand from the elder toads. They came to take what was left of Naruto's things to put his spirit to rest where no human will disturb his spirit. The heads looked down in shame. So that's why he hasn't had a tombstone placed in the graveyard. Hiruzen looked at Tsum as she spoke. What do you mean? Tsum cleared her throat and spoke up. My Pupkiba and he may not have been good friends, but they were classmates and as a mother. I told him we should go and lay flowers at his grave. Many of us did, but we couldn't find one. Hiruzen looked at Shikaku Nara as he stood up and spoke his mind. Let's not forget what we all did. We all looked at the boy as if he wasn't there. And now, we have a family that we have no idea what they are capable of on the way here. And we all know that they know Naruto is dead. We need to have a plan to deal with them once they show up. Everyone hated to admit he was right, but unknown to them all, a new prophecy was given to all the great elders of all the summons, one of destruction. This chapter will summarize the next four years of Naruto's life in hell. The next chapter will explain the years leading up to the main story of Haluva Boss and Naruto Shippuden. Luna will also be adopted at the same age as Naruto and Octavia. The old family and the new. Third Puff Kanoha The Return. The Nami Kazi family and Sanin walked up to the gates of Kanoha, all with different thoughts running through their minds. But all of them came to the same conclusion. They'd never have the same life they once had. The adults were no fools. They knew the news of who Naruto's parents would be, and knew they'd be seen as the bad guys. As they walked up to the check-in station, Minato smiled as his last student walked out of the gate. When the two looked at one another, Minato rushed over, knowing his student would at least be happy to see him. But before Minato could touch his student, a Kakashi's fist slammed into the side of Minato's face. Minato was sent flying with a punch of strength and crashed back into the gate. Don't touch me, you bastard. Minato sat up as his family rushed over. Blood ran out of the corner of his mouth as Kakashi glared down at him. Kashina looked at Kakashi, ready to rip him apart. Why, Kakashi? Kakashi narrowed his eye at them. You left that poor boy to die knowing we couldn't always be there. So you all know, the village had decided you all will not be allowed to rejoin the village as full citizens. For the rest, you'll have to see the Hokage for punishment for what only he and the Fire Lord know the full list of charges. They all stood there stunned as Kakashi jumped off to start his mission. The Namikaze family kids weren't sure what was happening, but knew something was wrong. Dread filled them as Minato got to his feet, and they walked into the village to the hateful glares and yells for them to leave and not come back. They were not willing to face the third Hokage right now and had the new prophecy in their minds. The words echoed in. Minato's head was like an evil voice that never left him alone. The hero to be has fallen, now a villain of unmatched power will rise. If he lives the world of shinobi will end, should he die then human world will burn by his heirs. The blood on your hands is something you won't lose, all you can choose is whose. Hell, third pav year one. Gosha family dining room. Naruto now ten swings six of his nine tails around with Octavia, trying to grab them all. She had three in her arms and stole his laughed as he ate a mouse. His wife Stella, a normally angry woman, was calm and smiling as he was the heir to a dukeship. This was the kind of friend she wanted her daughter to have and who knew, maybe she could get them together later. Her daughter could be the first Gosha duchess in the family's history. She was happy to see her husband had finally lived up to expectations for once. But, she felt her anger from humans growing after Naruto had told her and Stola what his life was like. They may have been demons, but even they wouldn't have treated kids like that. Ah. Stola's and Stella both jumped from the yell. They looked over and saw Octavia pulling on three of Naruto's tails. Let me have the other tails they're so soft. Octavia let his tails go right now. Stella got up, reached over the table, and grabbed Octavia's arms. Octavia you can't just pull on someone's tails. Octavia pitched a fit but did as her mother told her. Naruto grabbed the tails Octavia had yanked on. But, when he saw her sad face, he frowned, not liking seeing a girl that had been nice to him sad. Naruto moved his tails and wrapped them around her shoulders. Octavia blushed and smiled before she grabbed onto his tails. Naruto smiled, glad to see her smiling. Hell, third pav year one. The ten-year-old Naruto was asleep with his hair and tails splayed over the bed. Laying down beside her head on his arm and holding one of his tails was Octavia. Much to her father's annoyance, she would sneak into Naruto's room at night. 
Naruto was a heavy sleeper, so he only noticed her once he woke up. Groaning, Naruto opened his new red fox eyes and looked at the weight on his arm. He smiled as he saw Octavia asleep on his arm and holding one of his tails. Naruto looked down and saw she grabbed one of his shirts again and laughed a little before she slipped out of her hold. Octavia groaned a little before Naruto used a tail to pull the cover up to keep the warmth from leaving her too soon. He then pulled a pillow down and Octavia sighed as she grabbed onto the pillow. Naruto laughed again before fixing his shirt and sleep pants. Best to go and see the servants to find out what's for breakfast. Naruto walked over to his door and opened to see Stol is about to knock on the door. Putting a finger to his lips, Stol is nodded before he stepped out of the way and let Naruto step out of his room. Naruto closed the door softly before he looked up at Stol is. She's in my shirt this time. I guess we know where the four shirts walked off to. Stol is sighed as the two started to walk down the hall. Naruto slipped his hands into his pockets and Stol is tightened his rope knot. So, how are your eyes adjusting? Having unlocked your demon power may be a little stressful at first. So are you alright, my boy? Naruto nodded as he yawned. Yeah, it really was a pain right after. But, as long as I put only a little energy into them, it's not much trouble. But I wish Octavia would stop sneaking into my bed. I mean it's nice to know someone wants to be close to me, but damn I hate waking up to numb arms. Stolas laughed as they walked into the kitchen. The imp servants quickly walked over a set a plate of hellhog bacon with toast and scrambled eggs with orange juice. In front of Stolas, they set down the same meal with a newspaper and a side of oatmeal. Naruto sighed as he picked up his fork and started to eat the eggs. Once he finished, he looked at the door as Stella walked in fix her bath robes after taking a cup of coffee from an imp. Naruto couldn't help but notice her large double E cup freezed. She sat beside Stolas and took a sip as they set a plate with oatmeal, toast on the side, and cooked hellhog ham. Stella looked at Naruto as he ate the last piece of bacon. Is Octavia still all seep in your bed? Naruto gave her a simple nod as he drank his orange juice. Stella laughed something that Stolas was still getting used to again. Since Naruto had come into their home, life had become so much better for everyone in the home or working for them home. Over the last year, life around the house was getting much easier, and even the servants were happier. Naruto's mere presence seemed to calm everyone. Stella herself was even easier on her daughter and her husband, much to their joy. Naruto. Naruto laughed as Octavia walked into the kitchen wearing his shirt and pulling up a pair of black shorts. Naruto blushed then he saw a pair of purple panties. Stola cleared his throat. Naruto jumped before quickly finishing his plate as Octavia sat down. Naruto tried to get away, but Octavia grabbed his shirt as he tried to get away. She jerked him back down, and Stella laughed as she looked at the two. Oh future son-in-law. Naruto paled as Stola's glared at him. Stella laughed before she spoke again. Okay, I had my fun. You two remember we're having guests over for a dinner party tonight. Octavia, I expect you to be in that dress we picked out last week, and Naruto, please put on the suit we had made for you. I know you hate having the belt near your tails, but please, it's just one night, and fix your hair. Naruto nodded, but Octavia sighed as she wrapped her arm around Naruto's arm and leaned into Naruto's shoulder as she chewed on the bacon. Naruto looked out the window and couldn't help but wonder how his Jiji was doing. Naruto my boy. Naruto looked over at Stolas as he set his paper down. Stolas interlocked his fingers as he looked down at Naruto. Stella and I will be speaking with the rest of the Gosha. We expect you to act as proper young heirs to two great houses. Naruto, you are a new heir of what was considered an extinct house. Many eyes will be on you now that the word of you is making rounds. Keep your guard up. Some will be looking to try and get you into their house influence. Naruto nodded and noticed Octavia loosened her grip. Taking advantage, Naruto got away from her and bolted out of the kitchen. Octavia cursed as she watched her friend rush off. Later that night. Naruto growled as he adjusted his suit jacket and dark red dress vest. Naruto closed his jacket and sighed as he let his tails hang low. Naruto sighed as he looked at himself in the mirror. Naruto saw himself in a fine black suit and dress shoes, a dark red vest, and a white undershirt under the jacket. Naruto looked up and saw his brushed back hair tied to his back with a red ribbon Octavia had picked out for him. It gave him a small ponytail that was touching his jacket collar. Naruto are you finished? Naruto looked at the door and called out. Yeah, I just finished Octavia. Octavia opened the door and walked in. Naruto blushed as he looked at Octavia as she smiled at him. She was in a foam floor-length purple dress. Her shoulders and arms were covered in something that looked like fishnet stockings. Her hair feathers were pulled back and she had a crown on. Octavia laughed into the hand as she looked at Naruto. I guess you like the dress. Naruto nodded before he cleared his throat and walked over to her, his shoes making a soft click on the hardwood floor. He stood in front of Octavia, a bent arm out. Your servant. Octavia laughed but took his arm all the same. They walked back out of his and down the hall. 
They could hear the chatter as they got close to the ballroom. Once they walked in, the noise in the room stopped once they walked in. The nobles around him looked at him like a piece of fresh cut meat. As they walked to Stola's side, Octavia held tight to Naruto's arm. As Stola started to thank everyone for coming, a group of the older women of the family talked in the back. So that's the Wrath Duke to be. Bam, of course, Stella's already made some moves. You know we would do the same. Can't you feel the aura coming off that kid? He's already as strong as someone seven or eight years older than him. The oldest woman, a much older owl, spoke up as Octavia dragged Naruto to the snack table. He already has all nine tails. All the women looked at her as she spoke. Is that important? She nodded before she spoke up. Yes, I looked into the old history of hell, and I believe he's a kitsune demon. An incredible breed of demon with only a few in our history. But, for him to have nine like the last duke means his power will increase rapidly as he grows older. How strong was the last duke? She narrowed her eyes as Naruto studied Octavia with one of his tails. They danced around one another on the dance floor. These was able to wound the king of hell even if he lost the fight. That stunned the chattering birds and the surrounding noble. None of them had known that kid could grow to be that strong. They all looked at Naruto as he and Octavia laughed and danced around. But, many of the nobles froze as they saw two of the older heirs of a branch Gosha family. Move brats. They kicked Octavia's legs, but Naruto kept Octavia on her feet as he glared at the older heirs. They were both male white Bipatus, each in a blue and black suit. They smirked down at Naruto, and he growled before. To their shock, power erupted from Naruto, setting everyone on edge. His whisker and eye marker turned red, and his canines grew out into fangs. The tails not holding Octavia up ignited and burned a bright blue. His blonde hair turned blood red with his glowing red eyes. You dare to touch Octavia. Naruto slammed two flaming tails into their face and sent them flying. One slammed into the wall across the ballroom stuck in the wall, and the other slammed into the room's roof. He fell back down onto the floor. Both of them were out cold and bleeding, but everyone in the room was frozen to their spot on the floor. Naruto sighed and relaxed after a minute. The power in the air faded, and his tails, marks, and hair all returned to normal. But he still glared at the two as a female white Bipatu rushed over as another large white Bipatu male in a blue suit rushed over to the one on the floor. That was so cool Naruto. Octavia jumped into Naruto's side and laughed as she rubbed her cheek into Naruto's. Naruto blushed and laughed as he rubbed the back of his head. Stella smiled as she looked at the two of them. Oh, these two will help me take over the main branch sooner than planned. Stolas looked at the boy, shocked that he'd just stuck the two sons of his eldest brother and completely knocked them out. Oh, this is going to be a long party. And it was. Other heirs and heiress had tried to mess with Octavia. Still, Naruto was never far away, or Octavia just had to say his name, and he scared them off. But, this also made many of the nobles with daughters plan to try and steal him away from Stolas and Stella. At the night's end, Naruto and Akateva ran off as a few of the younger heiresses tried to separate Naruto from Octavia. After the party, Naruto sent Octavia off with her mother, while he stayed to talk with Stolas. Stolas grabbed Naruto's shoulder and made him look him in the eye. Young man do you know what you've done? Stolas didn't yell, but his firm tone made it clear he was upset. Naruto sighed as he looked away. Naruto, I'm not mad that you defended our outlet. In fact, I'm grateful for your actions. But do not resort to violence like that again. You've put yourself in the sights of some very dangerous demons my boy. Naruto nodded, and Stolas waved his hand, a sign Naruto knew meant he was free. Naruto rushed out of the ballroom, pulled the damn jacket off, and opened the red vest. Year 2. Hell Third Pav. Naruto, now 11, sighed as he sat on the roof, looking at the morning clouds. Not too long after, Naruto thrashed two of the heirs after they tried to make Octavia fall. Stella got off on the fact her future son-in-law had made it clear who had the strongest house in the family. Stella had sent Octavia off for a week to visit a few cousins she wanted her to connect with to ensure they had a better power block. She was so grateful for Naruto's wrath that night. Now she was sitting with the wives of her strongest supporters in the garden, ensuring her alliances. Naruto had given her a leg up she was looking for and was going to use it well. This funking heavy book. Naruto moved close to the edge once he heard a voice. He saw an imp with a large set of horns on the master room's balcony. He tried to stand, and Naruto saw he'd fallen into Stella's meeting. Not wanting to hear the yelling, Naruto grabbed the imp and book with his tails as he started to fall. Naruto set the imp down on the roof, and the imp looked at him. I don't want to hear Stella yelling or see you ripped limb from limb. Go to the other side of the house nobody is over there today. And before you ask, what Stolas does and losses has nothing to do with me. The imp smiled as he looked at Naruto. Working for me thanks, kid. If you ever need someone killed look me up. Names Blitz the O is silent. Naruto hummed, then nodded as he stood up. Naruto knew he couldn't get down alone, but noticed something about this imp. 
the air around him felt different. Come on, let me get you down and get lost before anyone knows what is going on. Blitz smiled as they walked over to the other side of the house, and Naruto used two of his tails to set Blitz down on the ground. As Naruto pulled the tails back, Blitz gave him one more wave before she slipped through the large shrubs. Um, I got the feeling I'll be seeing him again. Naruto sighed before deciding he wanted out of this damn estate for a day. He was bored and wanted a taste of freedom again. Naruto walked back across the roof and looked down at Stella as she laughed with her friends. His shadow was cast over the table, and they all looked up at him. The other wives were shocked as Naruto looked down at them with glowing red eyes. Stella smiled as she looked up at him and rested her chin on her hands, happy to see the king of the board. How can I help you, future son-in-law? Naruto narrowed his eyes as he looked at Stella, and she blinked, surprised at the look. Naruto. Naruto smiled before jumping and landing on the ground before them all. Naruto fixed his burnt orange vest and rolled up his sleeves as he locked eyes with Stella. Stella wasn't used to this Naruto. The Naruto she knew was relaxed and calm, but this version gave off more of a presence than normal. And she'd be lying if she said she didn't like this Naruto more. I'm leaving the estate for a little while. I've been locked in this place for more than two years. Then there are the times I'm left alone for days when you send Octavia off to other branches. I'm off to pick out some weapons and do some shopping. I don't want to dirty my tails, hands, or tails when I have to start killing fools. Stella looked at him, shocked, but then she smiled wider as she looked at him. Well, you do have a point. You've done everything we've asked and much more, so I guess some rewards are due. I'll have a driver get the car. Stella then looked back at her friends. You heard the dude to be girls he's going to go get some weapons. Stella stood up and then walked into the house. Naruto looked at the others, and they all nervously laughed as they looked at him. Naruto's look put them on edge. He laughed a second later, then bowed to them before he turned around. Thirty minutes later. Naruto watched a building and demon as they rode down the road. Naruto sighed as they came to a stop at a red light. Naruto looked at the demons walking around. Stella watched Naruto closely. She tried to keep Naruto close to those who'd be his equal or, much to her annoyance, a level under him like her family. She liked the boy, she really did, but she wanted him to stay around them. The car started to move again, and Stella wanting to know what he was thinking, spoke up. So, what kind of weapons are you looking for? Naruto looked at her and nodded as he spoke. I was thinking of a sword and maybe two handguns to get some range when I need it. Best to know how to fight at range and up close. Stella nodded, seeing the logic of Naruto's plan. Soon they pulled up to the best weapon store in the pride ring. They parked, and Stella told the driver to get some food as they were shopping, and would call him before checking out. He thanked her as she and Naruto walked into the store. They were greeted with bows and a few your highnesses. Naruto waved and thanked them. Stella smiled as they walked up to the wall of handguns. Naruto looked over the guns, and two caught his eyes. They looked like a set of twin fourth five Colt revolvers. They looked like they were made from black metal of some kind, and had glowing white engravings. In the center of the revolvers, the grip looked like it had a gem with six wings and a halo. Naruto grabbed the two guns and spun them on his trigger fingers. He grabbed the handles and smiled as he looked at them. I guess we have the guns now for the sword. Naruto nodded as a sales imp gave him an adjustable gun belt with two holsters and had a strap on the right front in front of the holster. Naruto holstered the guns and Stella told the imp to have a crate of ammo ready at the register when they were ready for checkout. They then walked across the store and soon got to the blade section. Stella started looking for a weapon for Octavia since she needed to learn self-defense too. Naruto smiled when he saw a katana with a black blade and red spine. The sheath underneath it with a white sheath and a line of blood red pentagram going down to the bottom. Naruto used two of his tails and grabbed the sword and sheath. Naruto sheathed the sword and put the sword on his belt. The eastern sword that's an odd choice. Naruto looked at Stella as she walked back over with a short sword. Naruto nodded as he turned and was about to walk away, but Stella grabbed his shoulder. He looked back and she held out a hellphone. I got one for Octavia one too. You two are about old enough, we should let you two have some independence. Naruto smiled and took the phone and slipped it into his pocket. Well, I guess we should get going. Stella nodded as they walked to the checkout. Hell third year. Naruto, now twelve, groaned as his eyes opened and looked up at his roof. At the bottom of his vision was a head of a black feather resting on his chest, and he could feel fingers on his left shoulder with a leg wrapped around his right leg. Naruto sighed, knowing he wasn't going anywhere with her holding him. Looking over at his dresser were his phone and weapons. Um. Octavia groaned as she moved around a little, and her head moved up his chest. Naruto gave out a small laugh, then wrapped his right arm around her shoulder and held her closer. Naruto closed his eyes, wanting to get some more sleep if he was stuck. Naruto lay there for about another 20 minutes before a few hard knocks came on his door. 
Naruto opened his eyes and looked at the door as Octavia groaned and held onto Narchuo tighter and pushed her head into Naruto's chest. A few harder knocks came from the door before Stella's voice came through the door. Stolas, leave them be. The teachers have been hammering them with work and Naruto trained late into the night. Octavia groaned as she opened her eyes. Damn it, what time is it? Naruto laughed more as he sat up. Octavia held on and groaned as she let go of Naruto. They got out of bed and Naruto stretched his arms and back. Naruto looked back over and blushed as Octavia leaned over, showing off her bright red panties. She was digging through the dresser drawer she'd taken over. He also couldn't help but notice that her hips, fasts, and freests were starting to grow out. Naruto pulls out a pair of tight black shorts. Naruto saw they fit her like a glove and showed off her fast nicely. Like her mother, Octavia had a very nice herdless figure and would have a great fast and freests. Octavia looked back at Naruto and noticed him looking at her fast. She smiled and shook her fast a little. See something you like? Naruto's face turned red and he looked away. Octavia laughed, walked over, kissed Naruto's cheek, and ran a hand over his chest as she walked away. I'll be waiting in the kitchen. Naruto watched her walk over to the door and opened the door, then looked back at him one more time before she left. Don't forget we're going to the harvest moon thing with my dad. Naruto nodded as she walked out of the room. Naruto gulped as he patted down his shirt and retied the knot of sleeping pants, making it come more off his tails. Naruto quickly grabbed his phone and followed her out. He rushed down the hall and slowed as he approached the kitchen and heard Stolas talking. Octava, how many times must I tell you to stop snacking into that boy's room? What's the big deal? Naruto's never touched me in any perverse ways, dad. The most that has happened was an accidental touch, but those are meaningless. He's asleep, or it's when we're training with our swords or when he's teaching me to shoot. And I can deal with it as I know what kind of young man he is. But you two are starting to develop some, and I don't want you sleeping in his bed anymore. I've seen how you look at him, Octavia. I don't want to have you and him to be teen parents. Deciding to end this, Naruto yawned as he walked through the door, acting like he hadn't heard them. He walked over, stretching his tails out, before he sat down next to Stella as she sipped her coffee. An imp put a plate of food and a cup of juice in front of him. Naruto nodded to the imp as he took a step back. Thanks. You're welcome young sir. Naruto started to eat as Stella spoke up. So, Naruto can we count on you to keep our Octavia safe? Naruto laughed and nodded as he ate his toast. Octavia smiled as she walked away from her father and sat beside Naruto. Stole his side as he walked over and sat in his seat and then looked at Naruto. Naruto, before we go, you and I will be going out to get you some things for the Wrath Ring. It will be the ring you'll be watching over once you've grown and married. Also, bring your weapons the place we are going is safe, but best to get used to always having them on you. Naruto nodded as he finished his breakfast. Octavia let him go and Stolas followed him out to the hall. As soon as they got away, Naruto spoke before Stolas could. We have to go see that imp to get the book right. Naruto smirked when he saw the shocked look on Stolas' face. I've kept your secret and helped him get away last year when he almost crashed one of Stella's tea parties. I let it go that day because Octavia would have had to suffer if you'll start fighting again, so I've held my tongue. Stola's eyes widened as he looked down at Naruto. He had no idea Naruto had thought of the family like that. I've looked into the wrath ring, knowing I'd have to take care of it one day. Naruto smirked as he walked into his room. Half an hour later. Naruto's eye twitched as he watched Blitz and Stola's talking about business investment. Blitz oh. I'm hungry. Naruto hummed as he looked at the door before it kicked in. Naruto saw a gray and white hellhound. She wore black leg stockings, blue shorts, and a black shirt with red fangs on her budding chest and fasts. But what caught Naruto's attention the most was her eyes. They were red with wide eyes that had slits. She locked eyes with Naruto and felt her heart race as she looked at him. Luna, I'm busy at the moment. Luna ignored Blitz as she looked at Naruto. Luna's instances screamed at her to get this alpha to be. Luna slowly walked over to Naruto and ignored Blitz's as Naruto held eye contact with her. Her tail wagged and Blitz looked on in horror. No. Blitz grabbed Luna and pulled her away from Naruto. Naruto laughed, then threw a tail out and smacked Blitz's face. Luna kicked him in the nuts and smiled as she looked at Naruto. Thanks, want to hang out with me? Luna asked, a blush on her face. Sure we still have a few hours until we head off to the Harvest Moon thing. Is that dinner down the street any good? Luna nodded as Naruto stood up and they left the office. Naruto was happy about the new friend. They soon exited the building and Luna grabbed Naruto's hand and started pulling him down the street. Naruto, without thinking about it, followed her. Naruto smiled as he was pulled into the dinner. They spent the better part of an hour talking and eating. By the end, Luna was sure she had found the alpha she wanted, like she used to hear the older hounds talk about. Naruto was so kind to her and listened when she talked. 
When they returned to the office, Luna held onto Naruto's arm and rested her head on his shoulder. She's also wrapped her tail around two of Naruto's foxtails. Naruto laughed as he rubbed the back of his head as Stolas and Blitz looked at them. Stolas had a worried look on his face, and Blitz looked ready to murder him. Naruto smiled as he looked at the imp. Hey Luna, you got a phone. Luna smiled and nodded as she pulled out another hell phone. Naruto told her his number, and she texted him so he had her number. Naruto thanked her, and he and Stolas left, much to Luna's sadness. Soon they were home, and Octavia dragged Naruto off as soon as she saw him. She wanted to show Naruto the dress she was going to wear. She had him sit in her room as she walked into her bathroom. After a few minutes, Octavia walked out in a burnt orange ankle-length dress with head feathers pulled up into a bun, with a few hanging over her face. On her neck was a dark blue lace tied around her neck. One Naruto blinked as he looked at her. Are you trying to match my favorite vest? Octavia blushed as she looked away from Naruto. Maybe I just wanted to wear something you'd like. Naruto blushed and laughed as he stood up. Well, I need to go and get dressed so I'll meet you in the car. Octavia nodded and walked back into her bathroom. She was going to put on a little makeup to make her eyes stand out a little more. Two hours later. Naruto was practicing his draw as the imps got ready for the pain games to start. At his side of the bar stood Octavia, happy talking with an older female imp named Millie. Naruto spun his guns one last time before slamming them back into the holsters. The announcer called out the start of the games, and Millie gave a quick goodbye before she rushed off. Naruto laughed and rested his forearm on his sword. So what do you think of the Wrath Ring? Naruto shrugged as Octavia grabbed onto his free arm as they started to walk to the stage to sit with Stolas. Stolas had a couch brought out, and they all sat in the shade. Naruto sighed, annoyed that all he could do was watch. Little did Naruto know this year brought him the two loves of his life. Hell year 4. Luna down. Naruto shot an imp, and Octavia pressed her back to Naruto's as she fired a rifle. On you left. Listening to Luna, Naruto turned and shot another imp. Luna rushed over, and they started to run through the street. You just did open your mouth Octavia. Naruto shot two more imps and a hellhound. Well, I'm sorry. They shouldn't have told us that they'd made a coat out of your tails. Luna cut in as she killed a larger imp with one of her twin katanas Naruto bought her as a birthday gift. Yeah. We're the only ones who get to do anything with those tails. Naruto growled as they rushed into the building with the I.M.P. office, luckily losing the last of the gang after them. They sighed as they got into the elevator. Damn it. Naruto was running low on ammo. He reloaded what he had as Octavia pulled another ammo magazine from her ammo belt. She loaded a fresh magazine, and Luna cleaned her blades as the door dinged. They sighed together as they walked out of the elevator. Naruto walked up to the door as Luna started to talk to her rival as she sheathed her swords. Hey, Octavia, why did your family have us start doing these small contracts? I know I shouldn't complain about the easy pay, but why? Well, for one, he wanted me and Naruto to get used to fighting. Since we're both from noble families, we must serve at least four times in the yearly extermination day battle. And two, unlike most demons like you, who get to hide from the fighting. If our house kills some real angels, then our houses keep the weapons and are paid for the rank of the angels we kill. Octavia huffed as they walked into the office to see Naruto and Blitz talking. Okay, so you guys killed the leader. Stolly was paying three grand for this one, and after I take the company's share, you'll each come out of this 750 each. I'll have the cash ready before you kids run off to lunch. Blitz stood up from the front desk and walked into his office. Naruto sighed as he rubbed the back of his head and looked back at the girls. Octavia and Luna were glaring at one another out of the corner of their eyes, and Naruto could swear he saw sparks. Coughed, getting their attention. They looked at him, and he smiled as he pulled out his phone. Who wants pizza? They smiled as they nodded, and Naruto made a quick call. Once the food was ordered, Naruto unlocked his gun belt, hung it up, and sat on the office couch. They quickly sat down on each of his sides. Octavia grabbed onto his right arm and rested her head on his shoulder. Luna wrapped her tail around two of Naruto's and interlocked her fingers. Octavia saw this and glared at their hands. Octavia did the same but held tight to Naruto's hand. It's not like I hate the attention, but I wish they'd give me some damn room to breath. Naruto's eye twitched as he waited for the pizza to get here so he could get free. Year 5. Naruto, now 14, jumped back, dodging an artificial angel spear. He used his sword to cut off the head of the artificial. Naruto jumped up, pulled out his gun, and shot one in the face. Naruto huffed as he looked around, seeing that he'd killed more than a dozen artificial angels, two normal angels, and one high angel of the First Order. He'd been abandoned by the other heirs of the other branch families of the Gosha. He knew Octava would be safe with the rest of the long-range combat units. Stola's house had become the most important and a front-runner, so Octava would be well-guarded as they fought. Ah. Naruto turned and fired at another high angel. 
Naruto hit the woman's wing, and she slammed face first into a wall. Naruto put another round in the back of her head, killing the angel. Naruto noticed this one seemed different from the other high angel. Unlocked most other angels, she had bright red hair. On the ground beside the angel, she dropped a holy katana with a pure white blade with a golden and white handle. On her side was a sheath, and Naruto smiled when he heard the alarm. Hunking finally. Naruto yelled as he fell back into a wall as the angel started falling back. He had a cut from a spear on his leg. It was a long cut going down his thigh. Sighing, Naruto forced himself up. He knew those funkers would return to take the spoils he'd fought for. Naruto holstered his gun, sheathed his sword as he walked over, and used five tails to take the holy katana and the sheath. Naruto slipped the sword under his belt, then walked over to the other high angel, and used two tails to pick up the holy double-bladed battle axe. The handle was pure white with a gold wrap center and lower grip. The blade body was white with golden edges. With a smirk, Naruto rested the battle axe on his shoulder. The normal angel was using the same spears as the artificials. Naruto. Naruto. Naruto turned as Octavia ran around a corner and laughed a little as he looked at the purple uniform Stella forced her to use. Her top fathers have been tied back with three feathers hanging over her face. Naruto hissed as his leg finally healed from the damn holy weapon. Octavia ran up to Naruto after seeing him. She hugged him, and Naruto laughed before Octavia pulled back and looked around. Where are the Gosha heirs dad put under your command? Naruto huffed as he looked at her. The second that saw the first high angel, they abandoned me to deal with it and the artificials. It was close right after they ran. Naruto touched his leg, and Octavia looked down at the slowly vanishing scar. If that artificial was just a little faster it could have taken it. Octavia fumed as she looked at the wound. Octavia knew the news would have covered the battle, so she'd get the faces of the Funkers. Naruto huffed before he looked down at the angel, knowing what he had to do to get his money. I hate this part. Naruto lifted the battle axe, and Octavia looked away. With one quick swing, Naruto took the head off the angel, grabbed his hair, and then walked back over to the woman. Naruto used a tail to turn her over and looked at her face. She had a round face with a small scar down her left cheek. Forgive me. Naruto cut off her head and grabbed her hair. Naruto turned his head and saw Octavia had gathered the spears up, and he smiled. He walked over and hugged her, and without hesitation, she wrapped her arms around him. Thanks Octavia. Octavia blushed and rubbed her face into his neck. Naruto was taller than her now, and Octavia had grown a little taller and had started growing into her curves. Naruto smiled as he ran a hand down her back. With a sigh, Naruto spoke up. Just two more and we'll be done with this nightmare Octavia. Who knows what the future holds for us once this is all done. Octavia smiled as an image of a wedding and eggs flashed in her mind. But then, an image of Loon taking Naruto flashed in her mind. Octavia held Naruto a little tighter, not willing to let him go. Octavia knew she loved Naruto, but didn't know if he loved her the same way. He's alive. Naruto growled as he held Octavia to his chest, knowing she wanted to attack the heirs as they returned. Naruto glared at the six birds. I'll deal with you six later. I have a meeting to get to and money to collect. The heirs looked pissed, and Naruto saw all they had were a few spears each. Naruto knew he'd called it right that they'd come to collect the reward for his hard work. Octavia turned in Naruto's hold as she tried to pull her rifle off her back. Relax, Octavia, I'll deal with them later. We all have to go to the palace to collect it later tonight, so I'll have my payback there. Now come on, Luna is waiting for us, then we'll go to the meeting tonight. Octavia's right eye twitched, not happy with that news, but knew she couldn't just tell him no. Octavia knew Naruto cared for Luna a lot. But she hoped it wasn't as much as he cared for her. Naruto grabbed the heads and spears with his tails. Naruto wouldn't leave these fools with anything of value. While holding on to Octavia's side, Naruto started to walk away. Octavia let it go knowing that when word got out that they ran from battle, a lot of damage would be done to their houses. The heirs would lose a lot of face in the wider view. Twenty minutes later. Naruto smiled as he watched Luna and Octavia scream at Blitz after taking a shot at Naruto. With a laugh, Naruto got onto his feet and walked over to the door to the meeting room. Naruto closed the door and pulled out his phone. Naruto opened his contacts, hit Stella's name, and then put the phone to his ear. It rang a few times before she picked up. Naruto. This is unusual. You hardly ever call me. Naruto could hear some water and guessed she was in the bath. The lower house asshole stole his set me up with ditched me while I was fighting a high angel, then came back to steal my spoils. But let me get to the point. I will call them out when we go to get our rewards. Half of them are some of the ones trying to take control. I'm going to skin those funker thinking they could do such things. I will stomp these little shits back into the dirt like the insects they are. Stella made a strange cooing sound, and Naruto heard some splashing around. Little did Naruto know what his words and powerful tone were doing to her. 
Stella loved the power his words gave off, and she ran her hand up her stomach and between her freest, before biting down on two of her fingers. After a second, she spoke with a spark she hadn't felt in years and started returning to her body. Stella moved her hand back down her body and pinched her left nipple before moving lower. Naruto, I'll deal with the parents. Kill those little funkers and turn them in new rugs for the house. Naruto laughed and smiled as he made a plan. Before he hung up, he swore he heard a moan before the call ended. Ignoring what she may have been doing, Naruto put his phone away. Naruto sighed as he walked back into the office and saw Luna and Octavia holding each other's collars. Naruto laughed, knowing his life would always be crazy. Naruto broke them up, and they glared at one another. Soon the pizza arrived, and they all started to eat. Hour hours later. Naruto stood beside Octavia and smiled as he watched Lucifer as he was about to give his little speech. Octavia leaned into Naruto, and he laughed as he wrapped his arm around her side. Lucifer walked up to the balcony that overlooked the hall. On his right side was his wife Lilith, and damn, she was beautiful. She was tall and had long golden hair. Her horn was larger and had curved back horns. Naruto saw she had a body that could put anyone to shame. From what Naruto could tell, her freests were Triple H cups, and her hips pushed the dress to its limits. On Lucifer's other side was their daughter. Charlie Morningstar and Naruto blushed when she looked down, and they looked at each other. Charlie blushed too, and Naruto started to really look at her. She was a little shorter than Naruto's current 5 foot 9, she had a somewhat slender demoness. She was standing around 5 foot feet taller over. She has long, blonde hair with lighter blonde and pink highlights, tied into a twice-banded low ponytail. Her blonde bangs flip to her left with a curl. Her lips are black, and she has rosy red cheeks. She wears gray eyeliners, her eyes are red, her sclera is light yellow, and she has thick black eyelashes, both top and bottom. She was in a dark red, almost crimson dress, showing off the already growing curves. It was clear she would be a real beauty, like her mother. Naruto also noticed her giving him a once-over as well. Interesting woman. Charlie looked at Naruto and smiled at what she saw. Naruto had spiky blonde hair tied back into a ponytail with crimson highlights at the edges. His bangs were a brighter red with a mix of orange and sharp piercing red eyes. He had on a white long sleeve dress shirt with a burnt orange vest and rolled his sleeves up. On his hands were combat gloves with burnt orange knuckle guards. Naruto had on his gun belt with his weapons all at the ready for a fight. He had on blue jeans with a pair of steel toe boots. Charlie smiled, and her black lips slightly plump lips you'd like your girlfriend to have. But, some told Naruto this woman was dangerous, but not like her parents. She had a slightly darker air behind her smile. Naruto. Naruto blinked and then realized he was holding Octavia tight to his chest. Sorry Octavia. Naruto realized that the speech was almost over, and the guards were taking the weapons and the heads Naruto had gotten. Now, each of your rewards will be given before the end of the party. Now, before I call the party to begin, I'd like to call attention to an heir to the first house to which I granted the title of Duke II. Naruto please come forward I have a speakle reward and offer for you, as you were the only heir to collect not only one high angel's head but two. Naruto let go of Octavia, but she grabbed at his hand, but missed as Naruto walked forward and looked up at them. Naruto saw the smile on Charlie's face, and something didn't feel right with that smile. Good to see you again, young Kitsune. My look at what you've grown into, my boy. You are only a year younger than my daughter and already killing First Order Angels. And those eyes are your Kurama's heir for sure. Those red eyes and that aura just scream power and death. Naruto thumbed his revolver, and Lucifer smiled as he looked at the hand. Oh, you'll make a fine candidate. Naruto looked at him before Lucifer gave out a low dark laugh. I'm looking into candidates to become my daughter's future husband. That's your first reward being the first candidate. The second is an offer to pick a weapon from my personal collection of angel weapons. Naruto stepped forward and laughed as he looked at Lucifer and spoke. Well I'm grateful for two such great rewards I'm afraid I must have seen. Lucifer raised an eyebrow and Charlie narrowed her eyes, thinking he didn't think she was worth his time. And gasps rang out around him. Lucifer hummed as he looked down at Naruto. Why is that? There was no anger in Lucifer's voice, but curiousness in the boy's reasoning. Naruto smiled as he held his arms behind his back, his nine tails swaying behind him. As you said, I'm a kitsune. A demon who loves to trick people and demons and steal what we see as vulnerable treasures. There is no fun for me if it's just handed to me, my king. Oh, and there is also a matter I'd like to bring up with you. Lucifer hummed and then nodded as he looked down at Naruto. Charlie also relaxed, realizing he wasn't thinking anything like she thought he was. I see your point. Kurama was the same way when it came to some he saw value in. He even took a chance at stealing my throne. In doing so, he was the only one to win me in such a fight. Very well, but I will not remove you as a candidate. 
you're very valuable, and besides you, I can only think of three others that I see as worthy of my daughter. My throne requires a lot of power to hold on to it. But that aside, what would you like then? I did offer you one of a kind weapon from my collection, but you've turned that down. But, all that aside what is this matter? Naruto hummed, then pulled his arms back from around his back and crossed them over his chest. His tail swayed faster, which they did when he was deep in thought. Naruto smiled as he spoke up. First I'd like a house of my own. Living with the Gosha family is nice, but in a year or two I'd like my own space. I've been making money for the last year, and I've got a lot saved to prepare for this. Second I'd like to make it known that aside from Octavia the other Gosha family heirs behind us fled from battle, leaving me to deal with the angels. I can't help but find this shameful and find them unworthy of their station. Naruto could feel the anger behind him and knew he'd have to deal with it once they were free from view. Lucifer hummed and nodded before he spoke up. I see. Well, I'm sure you know you're free to handle them then. Now as for the house. I've had Kurama's mansion maintained and it's deep in the Crimson Forest just inside the mountain range of the Pride Ring. When you turn 16, I'll have a group of workers come for you. Naruto bowed and stepped back. When he was within reach, Octavia grabbed his arm and dug her smaller claws into his arm. Naruto laughed as he felt the claws break his skin. Octavia glared up at the royal family, and Naruto saw Charlie smile as she looked at them with a glint in her eye. Naruto knew that look and knew this was far from over. Like it or not, he'd gotten her attention and knew she'd keep a close eye on him. Two hours later. Naruto smiled as he stood over the bodies as they burned with holy white flames. Naruto flashed his large canines and other teeth that were becoming fang-like. Three of these heirs were from far more prominent houses before Octavia's family line. Not with them gone, her house would become. Year 6. Naruto, Octavia and Luna were all 15, eating in the Gosha family forest. Stella had given in rather quickly once Naruto talked to her about letting Luna train with them. Stolas and Octavia found it weird that she easily gave in to Naruto's wants. Still, both choked it up to Naruto's presence, and actions made their house much more prominent among the remaining 40 houses. Hey Naruto. Naruto looked up from his sandwich. Luna set her sandwich down before she spoke up. I was hoping I could get you to help me and my dad with summiting. Naruto hummed, and Octavia looked at Luna as she spoke. What's up? Octavia glared at Luna with a smile as she spoke. We've got a lot of money saved up and we're going to get more weapons as well as hire some employees. Biltz and I were thinking of having some extra muscle in case someone gets stupid. I know you can bust some heads when you have to. Naruto nodded before he spoke. I don't mind helping back if I have to bust a few skulls I want pizza. Luna laughed and nodded as she started eating again. Naruto laughed, quickly finished his sandwich, and stood up. He sighed, not used to not having his weapon belt on. Are we done with the training for today? Naruto looked back at Luna, and she blushed when she locked eyes with Naruto. She never could look away once Naruto locked eyes with her. Her tail started to wag as she looked at Naruto. Sure, all we've been doing is conditioning. Let go and get my weapons, and we'll go. Octavia sighed and spoke up when she stood up. If that's the case, do I need to call for the car when we return? Naruto nodded as he helped Luna to her paws. Then he pulled her into his chest. Luna blushed, and he saw Octavia's eyes glowing red as she looked at this. Naruto knew he wanted both of these girls and could have them both. The laws of hell allowed him to have both as he needed to ensure he had heirs, as he was the only survivor of his house. But, he wanted to see how they would react to him becoming a little more interested in being the one who was being active, instead of letting them have control. He didn't give a damn about that funking candidate stats. I did just get that new motorcycle. I hope she doesn't mind holding onto me as we ride, or she could sit in front and lean back into my chest if she rather. Not caring about Octavia's glare, Luna rubbed her head into his chest. Her triple cup freest pressed into Naruto's chest before she pulled back as Naruto let go. When Naruto turned his back, Luna pulled her eyelid down and stuck her tongue out at Octavia as she glared hatefully at Luna. Luna turned and slammed her face a few times before she rushed after Naruto, a big smile on her face. Octavia's fist clenched as she watched Naruto walk away with that hellhound Biss. You haven't won him yet Biss. Twenty minutes later. Naruto backed his new custom wide rear wheel Harley. Its body paint was a bright orange accent with a main black body. The bike had four exhaust pipes, two on each side. Naruto had a fox skull painted on the front right under the pulled back handlebars. On the sides of the bike were his swords, and he kept his revolvers on his side. Naruto smiled as Luna hopped on in front of Naruto, to his surprise, not expecting her to really do it. Naruto also couldn't help but notice how her butt was so pressed hard into his crotch. He also noticed her fast seemed to have more size than those pants she showed. Luna leaned back into Naruto and smiled as he started the engine. But as he was about to pull off, Naruto felt two massive murderous auras. 
Looking back at the house, he saw Stella and Octavia looking at him from two windows. Octavia was in her room, and Stella was near the kitchen. Note to self sleep in the woods tonight. Naruto drove off, and Luna's tail slapped against his chest from the wind. Once they were on the main road, Naruto raced down the road. Naruto's smile grew as they rode on the road. Naruto wondered how far Luna would let him go, so taking his chances, Naruto rested his chin on her shoulder. Luna jumped a little, but I saw a smile and wide of her eye out of the corner of my eye as I drove. I wonder. Naruto smiled before he lifted his head back up, and with a dark smile, Naruto bit the side of her ear with my two front canines. A sharp moan came from Luna before Naruto stopped at a red light and dragged his fangs off her ear. Luna shivered from the attention, and Naruto thought he'd pushed enough for now. As he started to drive her heard Luna muttering something. Hunking tease. Naruto smiled, then let go of the right bar, grabbed her stomach, and shoved her more into him. Luna squirmed as Naruto held her to his body. Then spoke into her ear as he grabbed the handlebar again. I'm no tease. I just want to know what will get me stabbed or what will get those lips onto mine. Luna reached down and grabbed his thigh with her right hand. When they stopped at another red light, Luna turned and spoke, a blush on her face. All you had to do was ask if you really want something like that. Or you could just grab my fass and pin me against a wall alpha. Naruto blushed and decided that the first chance he got, this bis would howl for him. Soon enough, they pulled up to the office, and both noticed that Blitz's van wasn't there, and Naruto smiled. Naruto grabbed her hips before they got off the bike. He let his fangs come from behind his lips and slightly bit down her neck. Luna moaned as her left leg kicked a little as she felt the jolts of pleasure from the shaped fangs. Luna grabbed him, and Naruto grabbed his swords with his tails before she jerked off the bike. Naruto knew he'd gotten himself into it and was happy about it this time. You're so lucky we have a nice couch. Naruto put his swords on his sides as she pulled him through the doors. Not wanting to wait, Naruto grabbed Luna's hips, slammed her against the wall, and had her paws off the floor. Luna looked at Naruto, shocked, but he moved in, eye glowing a dark crimson. You did say I could do this, so I am. Naruto used four of his tails to make a seat for Luna. Naruto ran his hands up Luna's sides and smiled as he cupped her face, looked at her red cheeks, and then looked into her white slit eyes. So, little hound what was that you called me? An alpha. Luna blushed and looked away, too embarrassed to look narrow in the eye. Naruto smiled, grabbed her side with one hand, and grabbed her cheek with his other hand. At this close, Naruto noticed she had human-like lips. Naruto smiled as he rubbed a thumb on her upper cheek. Naruto. Naruto laughed before he leaned in, pressed his head to her, and made her look him in the eye. Naruto pressed his body more into her body. If I'm your alpha then does that make you my pretty bis? Luna was turning a bright red. Naruto laughed before he decided to go in for the kill. Naruto cupped her other cheek and moved in and kissed Luna. Luna froze for a second before she threw her legs around Naruto's waist and grabbed his cheeks, holding him in place. Luna opened her mouth, and Naruto quickly took advantage. Naruto deepened the kiss, and Luna moaned as she brushed her tongue against Naruto's fangs. Naruto lowered his hands, grabbed Luna's hips, and pulled her off his tails. Not wanting Naruto to move too much, Luna grabbed the back of his head, wrapped her arm around his neck, and grabbed onto the top of his vest. But, soon, they both needed air, so they had to break the kiss. Luna held tight to Naruto, her mouth open as she took a few deep breaths with her forehead pressed to Naruto's. Oh, my god. I can't believe you just dominated me like that and I liked it. Naruto smiled as he threw her up a little, then grabbed her fast cheeks. Luna smiled before she spoke with a smile. Let's get to the office. Naruto smiled and let Luna down, and she grabbed Naruto's hand and then pulled her along to the elevator. Luna pulled Naruto into another deep kiss while they were in the elevator. Naruto hummed, then shoved her into the wall of the elevator wall. Naruto held onto her waist as they made out. Luna broke the kiss and smiled up at Naruto. She grabbed one of Naruto's hands and ran it up her stomach, but stopped under her freest. You're free to feel them all you want. Naruto smiled before he grabbed her freest, and Luna moaned, rubbing her thighs together when he lightly dug his claws into her skin. Naruto smiled as he moved his tails around and ran two upper legs. But the ding came from the door before Naruto could do what he planned. They quickly pulled away from each other as two more female hellhounds walked in. The two looked at them and blushed as Naruto and Luna walked out of two of Naruto's tails on her. One wrapped around her waist and one around her tail. Luna quickly walked them to the office and unlocked the door. They walked in, and Naruto heard the door lock. Naruto turned and smiled as Luna grabbed his vest. Naruto smiled before he grabbed her waist and then threw her down on the couch. Naruto laughed as he unbuttoned his vest and shirt and left them open. Luna saw some scars on his chest, with a few on his shoulder. If anything we do makes you feel uncomfortable tell me and I'll stop. Luna nodded, happy to know he at least wanted her to be comfortable. I don't have any rubbers. 
Naruto smiled as four tails moved over to Luna. Oh, don't worry about that, Luna. Things you're thinking about are better kept in the Homer bedroom. I just thought maybe I'd see what my pretty bis likes. Naruto wrapped two tails around her arms and the other two around her waist. Naruto's smile widened, and he flashed his fangs as he pulled his right glove down. Naruto pulled her up with his tails, grabbed her cheek, and pushed her head up. Naruto opened his mouth and lightly bit down on her Adam's apple. He dragged his fangs back, and Naruto felt her whole body shiver. Then Naruto started to kiss his way down her neck but stopped at her shirt. He looked up at her face and saw her red face. Luna looked down at him and nodded. Okay. Naruto pulled her shirt up and saw she wasn't wearing a bra. Her nipples were a bright pink and were erect from her getting turned on. Naruto leaned on to and bit down on her right nipple. Luna loudly moaned while his hand played with her other freest and pinched her nipple with his claw. Naruto pulled back and smiled as he looked at her red face and saw her tongue hanging out of her mouth. Naruto's heightened sense of smell noticed a sweet smell in the air. Naruto looked down and saw a wet spot coming from her crotch. Oh? I guess someone likes to be a submissive bis. Naruto shoved his hand down her pants and felt that she had no panties on. Naruto retraced his claws and rubbed two fingers over Luna's outer lips. Luna howled from the sudden stimulation. But, as Naruto was about to do more to her, they heard the door handle shake. They froze before they heard Blitz's voice. The funk. I didn't lock this door. Luna are you in there? Naruto quickly set her down, and she pulled her shirt down as Naruto buttoned his shirt. Luna cursed under her breath, grabbed a jacket off a chair, and tied it around her waist before she walked over, unlocked the door, and yelled. Damn it Blitz you had to come back now of all times. Blitz's looked confused until he saw Naruto buttoning up his vest. Blitz looked ready to kill Naruto, but Naruto looked Blitz in the eye, his gaze was full of rage. Blitz second guessed attacking this kid knowing it meant losing more than his business. Naruto. Naruto looked past Blitz and saw Millie, one of his favorite imps of the pain games. Millie. Millie smiled before she rushed into the office and followed back a male imp. He had red skin and white freckles on his cheeks like many imps. His white hair leads to his curvy black and white striped horns. He also has a yellow sclera with black slit pupils. He has a long thin red tail with a barb at the end and lanky digitigrade legs ending in cloven red hooves. He was dressed in a navy black coat with red buttons and white cuffs, black pants, a white shirt with a black turtleneck, a large red bow tie, and fingerless gloves. Naruto. Oh, it's good to see you again. Naruto laughed before he dropped to a knee and hugged Millie before she pulled back and looked up at Naruto. Damn, sweetie you've gotten big. Where were you and the prince's family came last year but you didn't show. Up at the games. Naruto laughed as the male limp looked up at him. I've started taking contracts through Blitz there. I was helping Luna and him take out a few beep heads. Millie laughed, then she grabbed the imp beside her. She smiled as she rubbed her cheek on his. This is my moxie. He's the finest singer and gun user in all the pride ring. Naruto smiled before he held a hand out to moxie. The pleasure moxie. I hope you know you got one of the if not the toughest imps in all of hell. Even I have to second guess a fight with her. Moxie smiled, glad to know someone else saw what great Millie was. He shook Naruto's hand before speaking. Thanks, sir, and I know. They let each other hands go. Before Naruto could talk again, his phone started to ring. He pulled his phone out and saw it was Stola calling. He picked up and heard crashing and screaming, but it was getting farther away. Naruto, my boy, you must hide for a few days. Octavia and Stella are tearing the palace apart, and I don't know why. I'm heading to the vacation house down in Rath Ah. The call cut and Naruto heard him scream, and Naruto felt a chill run down his spine. Naruto put his phone away and then looked at everyone. Um, does anyone know a good hotel? Stola said Octavia and Stella are going crazy. You're staying with me. Luna grabbed Naruto and then pulled him to the door. L third pa 40 minutes later. Luna looked at herself in the bathroom mirror. Naruto had told her he was off to get them something from the Asian bar around the corner. Luna smiled as she walked out of the bathroom with a towel wrapped around his neck and smiled at her clothes. She dressed in yoga shorts and a black tank top. I wonder if Naruto would like this, or should I just strip and wait on the bed? Luna stopped when she heard the door open. She smiled when Naruto walked in with two bags in his hand. One was from the bar, and the other was from the pharmacy down the street. Luna smiled and walked over and took the bags. You can go relax Naruto my room on the right. Naruto thanked her, and he sat on the couch, took his boots and soaks off, and sat them beside the couch. Naruto also wondered how long Octava and Stella would be pissed about something. You got the premium teriyaki chicken rice bowl with California roll, you remembered what I told you over three years ago. Naruto smiled as he looked over to open the kitchen. Well, the two of you are the only two I took the time to know beyond knowing the basics. You love any teriyaki, and I remember you getting California roll more than once. 
Luna laughed and then walked over with the food on trays. Naruto took the trays with two tails, let Luna sit down, and leaned into his side. Naruto held the trays up with his tails. They started eating, and Naruto wrapped an arm around Luna's waist and ate with his other hand. Luna's tail was wrapped around two of Naruto's. Luna finished her California rolls before she looked up at Naruto. Hey, can I ask you something? Naruto nodded as he chewed on a California roll. Luna set his fork down and pulled one of the condoms from the pharmacy bag from her top. You want to go at it here or in the bed? Lemon happened. Two days later. Naruto pulled back from his last kiss from Luna for the last time today. He felt like he'd overstayed his welcome but left some money for the pissed off blitz. Luna had made him sleep in the office for the last three days. Now, he was returning to the palace hoping Octavia and Stella had gotten everything out of their system. He also wished to stay a little longer. Luna and Naruto had been funking almost non-stop. And now he would have to walk into a hornet's nest that he may have to run. When he walked out, he felt like he was being watched. The hair on the back of his neck stood up and Naruto jumped up, looked down, and saw Stolas coming out of a shadow. Naruto landed on a car and sighed as he looked at Stolas. You scared the funk out of me. And how the funk did you do that? Stolas sighed as he walked over and sat down on the car trunk. Naruto jumped down as Stolas spoke. I wanted to get you so I only have to deal with Stella's rage. As Octavia friend I was going by her kindness back with you. Stolas grabbed Naruto and opened a portal. Naruto froze before he was thrown through the portal and skipped across the ground. A second later, Stolas walked through with Naruto's bike. Naruto groaned as he stood up, holding his head. Naruto. Naruto froze at Octavia's voice and felt fear shoot up his spine. Naruto turned his head and saw Octavia looking down at Naruto from her bedroom window, and she looked mad. Naruto, not wanting to take his chances, jumped into the trees. Naruto hadn't had to use the skills he learned from the scrolls and his demonic chakra to rush through the trees. Naruto wasn't stupid enough to deal with a pissed off woman. He stopped after a few minutes of running. Naruto jumped high into a tree and sat down. He would talk to Octavia after she calmed down. Naruto. Naruto jumped and looked down at the ground. Octavia and Stola's coming out of the shadow of the trees. In Stola's hand was his book. That funking book. Octavia glared up at Naruto. Get down here now. Naruto flinched as Stola slipped back into a shadow. Naruto planned to get back at him later. Naruto. What did you do with Luna? Naruto sighed as he looked back at Octavia and figured he'd have to play this right to make things go his way. What I do with Luna is none of your business Octavia. Besides, I like Luna and you didn't help me with that. Octavia glared at him as he spoke. What is that supposed to mean? Naruto jumped down and landed in front of Octavia. Naruto leaned down a little and looked her in the eye, ready to get her and get some frustration out. You know you've clung to me and always pressed your body into mine. Did you not think a funking 15 year with free sen and fast like you're always hanging on to a guy all the time would make him horny, I can't even funking act on it. Sure, Luna did the same, but you know what? I can do stuff with her without a funking shade a walking father who'd take my head if I touched her. Look, the two of you are both the best and worst of my life sometimes. At least I got some damn relief with Luna. Octavia blinked and looked away and rubbed her arm. She knew he was telling the truth but didn't want to admit it. Her anger and jealousy were gone now that she knew Naruto wanted her, but he thought he couldn't touch her body. She also didn't know if she should hate Luna for taking Naruto's virginity or to be jealous that Naruto had taken her first. I it's... Naruto, I'm sorry I just... Look, you're my closest friend and it hurt to see you just leave with her and then spend days with her. Tears started to come to her eyes and Naruto stiffened, not expecting the tears. I mean, I know that you like Luna a lot, but am I here too? Naruto, unprepared for the emotions, sighed and pulled Octavia into a hug. Octavia wrapped her arms around Naruto, not wanting to let him go. Naruto ran a hand down her back and held her head with his other hand. Naruto sighed as Octavia buried her head into Naruto's chest, hiding her tears and the blush. I, I was going to show my resolve when you came back, but I guess it's too late for that. Naruto decided to throw the mind games out at the broken tone. Well, no I don't think you know a couple of things. I got a letter from Lucifer that told me about a law that lets the sole survivor of a noble house marry more than one woman. I planned on talking with you and Luna both about it, but well this all happened. Octavia looked up at Naruto for a second, then jumped up, grabbed him, and took him to the ground. Octavia grabbed Naruto's collar and started to shake him. Are you telling me we've been competing for two years for nothing? Naruto, very quickly having enough, decided to take control. Naruto grabbed Octavia's wrists and flipped her over onto her back. Naruto smiled down at her, and Octavia blushed harder as she looked up at Naruto. Well, I didn't get the letter until last week, to be honest. But, I just didn't know how to bring it up without you two suddenly thinking there was a top spot. 
Now, I need to have this talk with Luna too, but that can wait. Naruto flashed his fangs as he looked down at Octavia's neck. Let's see if he's submissive to me. Naruto leaned down, and Octavia blushed when his fangs touched her neck. Naruto let Octavia's wrist go and pulled Octavia up as he softly chewed on her neck. Octavia cooed from the new stimulation, put a hand on the back of Naruto's head, and pushed him into her neck more. Octavia loved the attention Naruto was giving her. Naruto dug his fangs into Octavia's skin, and Octavia gasped as her feathers fluffed out. Surprised, Naruto jerked his head back and spit out a small feather. Octavia blushed as she looked at Naruto. Octavia jumped on Naruto and grabbed his cheeks before she pushed forward and locked lips with Naruto before they fell back onto the ground. Octavia had waited years for this and wouldn't let Naruto go until satisfied. For his part, Naruto wasn't ready for Octavia to be this aggressive. Still, he was going to make her submissive to him. Naruto grabbed Octavia's hips and flipped them as Octavia opened her mouth and Naruto took control. Naruto picked her up like a bride and the kiss broke before Naruto jumped into the trees again. Naruto. Naruto smiled as he raced them through the trees, then raced along the ground when he hit a gap. Something like what you and I are about to do is best to do in a bedroom. Naruto jumped back into the trees while Octavia smiled as she looked up at Naruto, still smiling as he jumped onto the house's roof. My room or yours? Naruto smiled as he walked over to his side of the house. Naruto looked over and saw his balcony doors were still open. Naruto jumped down onto the balcony. Naruto entered his room and closed and locked the door with his tails. Naruto smiled before he set Octavia down on the bed. Octavia quickly pulled her jacket off as Naruto got his weapon's belt off. Naruto smiled as he looked over at Octavia. She wore a nice shirt, torn tight blue jeans, and black leather boots. Octavia already had double D cups at her age, and he smiled as he imagined what she could grow into later. Naruto quickly got his vest and shirt off. Oh my. Octiava looked at Naruto as she looked at his chest. Octavia pressed a hand to his abs and ran her hands on them. Octavia almost always slept next to Naruto, but had not seen his chest since first meeting him. She was amazed at how his body had developed. Naruto smiled before speaking up and ran a hand through her head feathers. Octavia moved her up his chest, and she smiled before she pulled her hand away and then pulled her shirt off as she stood up. She had on a bright red bra with lace at the edges. Naruto saw her chest feathers seem pitch black, but she had a large patch of white feathers on her stomach, which went to the underside of her frieze. He also saw she had on a bright red thong. Naruto smiled before he grabbed her cheeks and started to kiss her again. After a second, Octavia opened her mouth, and Naruto attacked. Lemon happened. Naruto and Octavia lay in bed, falling asleep, but neither noticed a pair of glowing red eyes from the shadows. Then a soft annoyed feminine groan before they vanished, and Stella stepped out of the shadow next to Naruto's room. Stella couldn't believe she envied the funking her daughter just had. She groaned as she felt her lower lips quivering. That spark of the boy after the award ceremony lit in her had grown into an inferno after seeing that. Stella started to quickly walk down the hall to get in a cold bath to put that heat out and to try and get that boy out of her head. He was only 15 for Lucifer's sake. Stella stopped and punched the wall before she grabbed the crotch of her dress, her arousal starting to cloud her mind. Damn it. I wanted to be funked like that too. Why did my daughter have to get a funking stud and I'm left with a non-romantic funking limb beeped bird? Stella punched the wall a few more times, her lust very quickly taking over her mind as she rushed to the nearest bathroom to cool her body down. So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.